We'd like to thank Dr. Uh, Professor Mushtaq Ahmed for uh, uh, his presentation. And now, Dr. Fahd al -Huimani. Uh, Dr. Fahd al Huimani is the uh, director of the PKI program, and uh, he's the uh, uh, head of the National Center for uh, Digital Certification. He's the general uh, supervisor for the IT department, and also he's sen uh, senior advisor to the Minister of Communication. Would you come, please, Dr. Fahad? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته صباح الخير جميعا المحاضرة طبعا راح تكون باللغة الإنجليزية <تصفيق> عفوا لأنه يبدو أن جميع المحاضرات باللغة الإنجليزية فنعذر لكن من نحتاج منكم إلى محاضرة أو أو ترجمة لهذا المحاضرة باللغة العربية فهي موجودة وبالإمكان الإرسال على info at pki.gov.sa uh, info i n f o at p k i dot uh, gov dot s a. We inshallah nersel nuskha billaga al al Arabiya. Okay, uh, we switch now to to English. Um, uh, thank you very much for all the presentations that I heard today, and I think these are very helpful uh, presentations. And I think uh, uh, when we talk about P K I in Saudi Arabia and we talk about the National Center for Digital Certification you will see that there, really there is a, a room for cooperation uh, with the, the, uh, the, assurance, the Information Assurance Center here at K, uh, King Saud University and even uh, outside. So uh, we welcome any kind of cooperation, any kind of uh, uh, queries uh, that come from um, anyone else. Okay, so I will be talking about PKI in Saudi Arabia. I will try to make this brief because I think we are running out of time, so I apologize uh, ahead of time on that. Okay, so okay, I will not go into too much of the uh, you know the, uh, the definitions, but just to give an idea of what we are talking about. Uh, PKI it is public key infrastructure, <clears throat> and it's basically a system for providing a secure and trustworthy uh, network environment for users. Well. We also heard about these four main functions earlier today, so I will not uh, delve too much into that. But why do we need PKI? Because we want to make sure that information is confidential. Uh, we want to make sure that people, when they talk to each other, they recognize each other 100%. They have to identify each other positively. Uh, we also want to make sure that data is uh, uh, kept uh, in its original form no changes are possible uh, to data. And of course, we want to uh, be able to use electronic signature to uh, perform signatures on all kinds of documents, contracts, and so on. Briefly, the idea of the private key, public key, a digital ID or a digital certificate, it basically is a way to link an identity <coughs> with a public key. Public key is an encryption key. That's really what the digital ID is. Uh, the, so the public key is part of the digital ID. The private key is what you keep <coughs> usually in a smart card because that is the best way to, to, to keep it or a, a, some kind of a, a cryptographic uh, token. Okay, so how do you encrypt? Um, what do you use your public key for? Well. You can use uh, other people's public keys to encrypt messages that are going to, to them. So that's what you do. So if I need, uh, thank you very much. So if I uh, need to send you a message in an encrypted form, I take your, pri uh, your public key and I use it to encrypt. And I also use your public key to verify a signature of, uh, for a document that you sent me. So you send me a document encrypted with your private, uh, signed with your private key, I have to use your public key to verify it. Okay, wh what do you use your private key for? Well, you use it to sign messages to that, that you want to send to other people, and you decrypt messages that people have sent to you. What's the role of the CA, which is the Certification Authority? Um, it's basically the agent of trust in any PKI environment. Okay, it creates and digitally sign uh, certificates for users. That's what the CA really does. 
And as long as people trust the CA, and this is really why it is very critical that CAs are trusted authorities, because once people trust that, this, that CAs are operating in, in, in a correct way, uh, they can trust the certificates that are issued by those uh, CAs. A root CA is just another CA, but it comes at the highest level of the chain of trust. So it basically issues certificates to CAs under it, and CAs in turn issue certificates to, to end users. I don't have a picture of what, because uh, I'm trying to make this really brief, uh, a picture of the structure of PKI in Saudi Arabia, but it's basically a root CA on top. This is all housed within the National Center for Digital Certification. So we have a root CA, and then under the root CA, you have a number of CAs. And then you have registration authorities all over the place. So everything is really centralized in one place uh, with the root CA and the CAs, not all the CAs, but the major CAs for government and for uh, uh, citizens. These are all in the same location. Okay, I may talk about it uh, or, or it may come up uh, <coughs> later on. Uh, so that's what the registration authority does. Okay, so what, what kind of applications uh, uh, could you uh, use with PKI? Obviously, you can use secure email to encrypt email so that no one can see it. Uh, application security, this is a big area where you can identify users for e-commerce, for e-government, for all kinds of services. So the application can recognize the users and they can communicate. Signing documents, clearly you can, this is a very helpful and useful uh, feature if you can uh, sign commercial contracts, for example, online, if you can you know, sign all kinds of government con uh, documents online. Uh, signing software, this is a good way of preventing some of the issues and, and uh, uh, malpractices that we talked about today, the gentleman he talk talked about here today. Uh, so if you know, for example, that the software that you are about to download or a software that you're about to run on your computer, if you can know whether it, re it is really coming from a trusted source or not, that would be a very helpful thing to have because you can decide if it, is, if it, if it has a, the proper certificate, I will run it on my computer. If not, I will not run it on my computer. Time stamping of documents and transactions, that's a service that can also be provided by PKI. Uh, public notary, you know, you don't need to really go to to the Chamber of Commerce or go to some uh, official to get a document or a statement saying that you are person X, Y, Z or whatever. That can be done all online. Secure communication between computer devices. So we can issue certificates to routers, to switches and so on, so that they cannot you know, run wild within your network environment or you know, invade other areas that they're not supposed to, uh, to, to go into. And there are other uh, applications that you can think of. Um, there are, of course, other security methods, but PKI seems to be the reigning champion so far because we have not seen a technology that really provides all the, all the features of PKI uh, that is uh, available today. But of course, we are using user IDs and passwords. And so, you know, you, you hear sometimes people say, okay, I'm happy with my user ID and password, why should I use PKI? And the problem is that you know, there, are, there are limitations with user IDs and passwords. Very briefly, you cannot sign with a password. A password is not really meant for signing. At least you cannot do that legally. You may, you may sign or you may invoke an action with your password that, you know, that says signing, but legally it is not because there is, there is no password law. You know, there, there is electronic signature law, but there is no password law. So you can't really do that. And, of course, you cannot encrypt with passwords. They're not, they're not designed for that. Um, and there is, of course, high management overhead. How many passwords you have? How do you manage them? They are easily guessed. They get lost and the, all, all these kinds of problems. They are subject to phishing attacks that we just saw now. You know, it's easy to, to set up a fake site and, you know, lure you into giving uh, in your, your password and so on. So that, 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 that can easily be handled with other methods other than... Uh, and it's not good for authenticating devices and applications. You know, the password is something you, you put in your head. You keep it in your head. It's not written anywhere. But how do you do that for a device? How, how, how,